Hello YouTube, it's Das Gregor, and welcome back to another Linux review. Today we are looking at Sparky Linux. Now if you remember, back in October I did a review on Sparky Linux when I was on the road for work. I was looking for a lightweight distribution that worked well and I found Sparky. It was easy to download over the limited bandwidth that I had out in the field. I was able to test it and use it quite efficiently. I was very, very happy with Sparky Linux. Now, somebody has requested that I look at Sparky Linux Game Over Edition. Now, what is Sparky Linux Game Over Edition? But an excellent, fun resource of practically any emulated software or gaming stuffs you could ever think of. This thing is awesome. Not only is it lightweight, works well, fun to use, but it comes so packed with so much gaming that if you ever got bored using Game Over Edition, it's your own fault. Let me first go over a few things that are on just the dock bar alone. And I actually had to write myself some notes. So let me pull those up real quick so that we can look at this. And by the way, isn't that an awesome GUI right there? I love those penguins. Yeah. Anyway here. This first one here is called Dasumi. And I apologize if I mispronounce some of these names. Uh, they are uh, quite interesting in their naming. Dasumi is a Nintendo DS emulator. Dasura is a game service much like Steam that's online that you can uh, create an account for and purchase games and then have them work in your system. DOSBox is a wonderful DOS emulating uh, utility. You can get older style games to work in those that were DOS based games such as those original King's Quest 1 series and Space Quest 1 series. I've done that before and one of my goals is to get some of my uh, good old games, which one of my favorite sites to go to to get games. A lot of those are DOS box editions. I need to make sure they run in Windows and they're meant for Windows, but surely I can make them work in a Linux environment using DOS box with that as well. We move on along here and we've got the GNOME Video Arcade. Now the GNOME Video Arcade is more of a front end for MAME. And if you don't know what MAME is, MAME stands for Multiple Arcade Machine Emulator. Even I had to look that up. And what that is, is a emulator for coin operated machines. If there is a demo or a bin file that you can use that is for some of those old arcade games and you have legal access to them then you can use this emulator software to be able to run them and play them. We move on and we've got Nestopia which is an NES emulator. We also have the PCSX which is the PlayStation emulator. Are you catching the drift here? There are emulators for practically everything. This distribution is awesome. We move on and we've got Play on Linux. Now Play on Linux isn't an emulator per se. It's a modified version of Wine that is made to attempt to work well with most video games. Now I've had a lot of mixed feelings with Play on Linux in the past. Sometimes it works really well for a Windows game to work in Linux. Other times I've had all kinds of trouble with it. But it is still a great feature to add in this wonderful collection. Steam, of course, is becoming something very big in the gaming world, especially with Linux users now that they have built it for Linux and made a few things available. Unfortunately, my collection of Steam games 
I have only one or two that are actually working within Linux and that doesn't really make sense to me because there are a lot of the games that I have which are older games that should work in a Linux environment very easily it should be to port those we move on to Stella which is an Atari 2600 and maybe a 7800 as well uh, emulator now I do have some games that actually work with this and that's nice because it's kind of fun to play those old Atari games although my folks still have our original Atari from the 70s and my kids actually enjoy playing that on the original equipment from way back when moving along Visual Boy Advance if you know anything about gaming okay boy it must be a Game Boy emulator and sure enough you also have this one here Yabauze I assume which is a Saturn emulator and finally the ZSNES NES game modulator and the reason why I call that a modulator is it seems to have a lot more built into it about configuring setting up different devices and the options chip configurations etc if you have cheat codes for those games and so forth and so on now unfortunately and this is my disclaimer for this type of an operating system is this is giving you all the tools that you would ever need to be able to play some of these old games however you need to make sure you legally have versions of all of the software that you want to play in these emulators you don't want to go out there and pirate software I am always anti-piracy now these are freeware open source tools and utilities that you can use to play your old games and to give as an example with the PlayStation now I do have a PlayStation 2 PlayStation 3 I have also the DS and the GameCube and the Xbox 360 I've got all those gaming systems and so I was able to find with this particularly that I had a CD still now if we say run CD it begins to run and I don't want to go too much further past this you can see that's Mortal Kombat and it's starting to run it and I don't want to do anything um, that could cause me any type of problems with copyright laws so just to show you hey it started to work there it is now I suggest that if you want to do this and this is unfortunately not my cup of tea you look to see where you can find this type of software the games for instance legally that you can put on your system and once you have those you can utilize these tools and have fun on your desktop with some old games that hmm, you couldn't probably play until today if we look at the rest of Sparky Linux game over edition you will notice that we are sporting the LXDE desktop and it is very quick very efficient it boots up very fast it shuts down even quicker I've had very little trouble with it it has been really fun to play with this week it was kind of a, a light uh, shall we say uh, diversion from what I'm used to looking at and what I'm used to working with with reviewing different Linux distros if we take a quick look at the menu and I don't like to go through menu hopping and all that but you will see that it does have its typical accessories and it does have of course its system tools and in the sound and video it does come with record my screen or my desktop and that's what I'm using and I am using if you notice Camorama instead of the GUVC view. I wanted to try to use the software that was on the system instead of always downloading the ones that I'm used to. You know, it's always good to see if does stuff work right out of the box or do I have to install my own uh, customized or familiar software and this works really well. I've been very impressed with this version. 
Now I kind of skipped over a couple because you will notice when we get over here to the games that there is a page and a half to two pages or more of different games to list. Everything from 0 AD and we start to go down as you can see there are just a great number of games it just scrolls and scrolls and scrolls so not only is there an excellent source of a lot of emulation software but there are also a great number of Linux games that they have installed and made to be available through Game Over Edition and I have played a few of these that I was familiar with Super Tux Kart for instance they have, of course, um, the Tux Racer that I enjoy, and, of course, the biggest one that I can spend hours just racing and racing, Armagatron Advanced, the light cycle game. Lots of fun with that stuff. Always lots of fun. If we look at the rest of the stuff, because you say, hey, it's not all about the gaming. It's great that I have gaming, but if it's so stuck on just the gaming, I can't do anything else. Well, it does come with some other things. We have Dropbox, which is handy if you have your emulation bin files to be able to grab them and pull them down. Ice Weasel is the browser that it uses. Now, Ice Weasel is really just Firefox, but it's called something else. Of course, the Instant Messenger for Pigeon and transmission for BitTorrent clients and an IRC client as well. We look at sound and video and you'll see of course the also mixer, uh, the record my desktop VLC is an important one to have for playback and CD burning software. So your basics are all there. Now you will see for instance in here a lack of office products. You will see a lack of any other type of productivity products but just like any other Linux distribution that doesn't mean that you're hosed and you don't have those software packages you simply just have to go into the application manager install look for them not in that order <laughs> <laughs> those packages and you can easily get LibreOffice or anything else that you want to install for this flavor of Linux. Now if I didn't mention Sparky Linux is based off of Debian which means that it is very stable and very strong very secure. With this base and using LXDE for speed with the desktop it's been a delight to run with this week. I've had so few problems playing with it, enjoying all the different games on here, and it's been a joy. Just, just put it there. Thank you very much for the subscriber who asked if I would take a look at Sparky Linux and give a review about it. A reminder once again, if you are interested in playing all of these types of emulators, they don't come with games to play. You must first legally get and acquire those games to be able to put on there to play with them. Now, unfortunately, like I said, I don't know exactly where on the internet you can go to get a lot of those proper bins, or if there are packages, it would be nice to be able to know, for instance, on uh, my P, uh, PlayStation game, if I was able to create a bin file from that so I don't have to put the CD in there and then be able to play that on here as well as maybe taking some of my other digital games that I have and making them so that I've got something that I could use here at the emulators it's just kind of a fun way to be able to take your older collection with you and play with them and it's great that they have taken all of these wonderful utilities and put them together in one place. So until next time, whether it's morning, evening, noon, or night, 
Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this review of Sparky Linux Game Over Edition. Before I go, I will bring up, maybe, which I think I closed. Darn, maybe I won't bring that up. I was going to bring up their website to show you. And uh, let's just do that real quick. Ice Weasel. If you type into your browser Sparky Linux, you will find right away that it pops up sparkylinux.org. Very good, very clean look. It talks a little bit about the different distributions that they have and how they have rolling releases, lightweight. Their main edition is LXDE. Enlightenment is available as well as the Mate edition. And this, of course, this is their special gaming edition game over. Um, I have used it now a couple times. As I said, I looked back at Sparky Linux back in October and was very happy with them. In their download area, you will see that you can get it in for the older style systems as well as 64 bit systems. And it is very simple to either get a BitTorrent file or the full version. And you will also notice that if we get down here into the Game Over Edition, that it doubles in size almost from some of these others that are 1.4, you're up to 3.78 and 3.83. But there are loads and loads of fun games to look at with this flavor. So. I encourage all of y'all, if you're looking for something for your old machine, or just looking for something fun in general, that you look at Sparky Linux again and chest it out. It has been a pleasure. And back to my out. If it's morning, evening, noon, or night, whatever you're having, I, having <laughs> I hope you enjoy it. Have a great weekend. We'll talk to y'all later. Bye, guys.